thank God. And I don't wipe away the tears. I have to put our trust in Him. We thank God for all of you that are here today. And the Lord has blessed all of us to be assembled together again. Having life, thank the Lord for help and strength. We just thank God for each and every one that is here present today. We thank God for being in the hospital. In the hospital. And, and the thing that will help us is the scriptures. Everybody needs some kind of treatment. No matter who you are, you need a treatment. And the thing that gives us what we need is the word of God. And I thank God for the word. Because if it wasn't for the word, then everybody would be right. You know? Even sometimes the doctors that treating us in a natural hospital need help. You know that? Even a doctor that's in the hospital need help. So that, so that don't leave nobody, nobody's exempted. Is that right? So we thank God for the word that gives us the explicit information about God and how God wants us to live in every area of our life. So we're glad for all those in Carroll, Thomasville area. We thank God for you. Amen. Thank God for Mother, Mother Green and the passion of Bishop Green. Uh, so we just thank God for, for just being able to see you all again. And we pray that God will continue to touch and strengthen us and heal us in every area of our lives. Uh, before we get started, we're going to have a few remarks from my brother back here. Pronounce your name again. Angela. Oh, I, you. <laughs> I can't get it right. Uh, you know, I'll ask him what his middle name is later on. I'll remember that probably uh, if there's a middle name. But nevertheless, we thank God for him. We're going to get a few remarks from him. And after his remarks, we'll turn it over to my brother, Brother Rick, as I said on the youth Sunday. He would be ministering and giving us some encouraging words. So we thank God for that. So be encouraged. Get ready to get our medicine. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Get the dose of medicine. But before we turn over to Rick, we're going to get Angela. Angela. I keep this church lifted up and pray every day. I don't think I tell you before God. And you have such a wonderful man of God here. I mean, he, he really prays the word. He got the love for people. And, and, I, and one thing I do know, y'all got to be supporting him because mm -hmm. he, you're on every Sunday, right? Sir. You're on every Sunday? Sunday, yes, sir. You're on every Sunday? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that's high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. When I, when I, when I pray, I, well, I pray like 85 on those 30 minutes. So I know if you're with four times out on a Sunday, y'all should have lost some money. Mm -hmm. Come on, give, give, give me the Lord a hand. Give me the Lord a hand. Thank God that y'all supporting him. Stand with the man of God. Help the man of God. Push the man of God and he will help you. And as I was sitting, I'm going to say this briefly. As I was sitting there, I thought about the church in Cairo and the people were telling me what they were doing for their past. And I said, wow, y'all do all that? They said, yeah, we want the man of God to be free. Do you know what they said they were doing? They said they were paying all of his bills. I said, so what? Did you know what they said? They said, this is what they told me. They said, the pastor ain't got no bill. I said, what you say? I said, the church paid everything. I said, why? I said, we want our man of God to be free. Oh, that's now, that's what they told me. I don't, lying. I don't know. But the husband and the wife told me, they said, they pay all the pastor's bills. They said, when he's going to preach or teach, whatever he do, we want him to be free. Right. We don't want him to be bound no kind of way. So when he stands to preach the word, he can just go. And I love that was so lovely. And I just thank God for that. And I just thank God for everyone here today. And, and I want to say earlier this morning, I stepped on a mail yesterday. And that thing gave me a fit. Ooh, my foot swallowed up. I couldn't sleep. Last night I tossed and turned. I told my wife, baby, I'm going to the hospital. So went to the hospital, stayed there a little while, and they gave me a couple shots of my shoulder. But make a long one short. Y'all see me walking good, but this morning I couldn't say that. Yeah. I stepped on the mail. Next to me, we stepped. Well, he stepped on one too. I guess I stepped on a different man, but I didn't see it. But nevertheless, my foot was just old, which is foul. I had to go to that doctor. But I thank God for healing. Yeah. I want to say in my closing, I love each and every one of y'all so much, and I miss y'all dearly. And if you say you love me, guess what? I love you more. I love you more. I really love you more. 
And I thank God for my lovely wife. I'm just coming, just coming, the month coming in, we'll celebrate 36 years. Amen. 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 A woman that loved the Lord and loved God's people. Always giving, always sharing, always doing. Amen. And we thank God for Sister Green hung on in there with Pastor Green and Sister Green. Amen. 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 She hung on in there. It wasn't easy, but she hung on in there. Yeah. Sometimes, like I say, folks are going to and leave at the bad time. Bad time to leave, eh? God, Jesus. I just thank God for everybody. Love you, brother. God bless you. Y'all pray much me in heaven. Brother Rick. Nothing unusual for the fleshly, the man. Yeah. 
We don't want death to come our way. But anytime trouble and so forth come our way, we say, get behind me, Satan, put this thing up for from us. You know why? Because we don't want we don't want to suffer those things. That's right. But sometimes in life, say, we have to get willing to die. Amen. That's why the Bible says, take your cross. Take this cross. In other words, we got to bear our own cross. Yeah. And cross, cross is not a joyous thing to be hanging up. Hanging up suffering. It wasn't joyous for, for our Lord. But he did it for us. Thank you, Jesus. When you make up in your heart and your mind to the point that you truly get understanding of what you're doing and why you're doing what you're doing, you'll get glad about it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a glorious thing to suffer for the Lord. When we get ready to fast and pray, Fasting is not a joyous thing. Uh -uh. We have to turn down our plate. A lot of, a lot of us love yeah. to eat. Yeah. You know, I may not be a big person in statue, but trust me, I can put away some food. Yeah. But you know what? It's joyous to be able to eat. Great. But then once we have to start turning down our plates because yeah. we seek something that's better, saints. Yeah. Yeah. And once we're seeking something that's better, that's a suffering part of us. Thank you, Lord. How, how, Amen. Read that scripture again with John read the 17 and 17 of Proverbs. A friend. Because basically it's like when you have a friend or whatever and then they're willing to stick there beside you, sometimes a friend has to fight for you. Amen. He wasn't the one that started the fight, but sometimes he got to fight for you. Why? Because you're his friend. He's trying to protect you. How does it read? Uh, Proverbs 17, verse 17. Mm -hmm. A friend loveth at all times, Amen. and a brother is born for adversity. When you got someone that loves you, they'll stick, they'll stick beside you. Yeah, they will. I mean, through the thick and through the thin. Yeah, they will. You get a black eye, I take a black eye for you too. You know why? Because I love you. Yeah. You know, I don't want I don't want you to just you know to, to be up here getting beat up or whatever. Yeah. You know, but you know if I gotta protect you, I, I try to protect you. Right. Even if I gotta you know. Take some suck. You know, it's, it's, it, it has always been amazing to me to watch a child and their mother. Not that it's decent to see, but the part that I'm looking at is the child itself. It could be a little two-year-old boy, two-year, two, two, two or three-year-old little girl. Yeah. When they see their mother getting jumped on or getting fussed at, they, they, they'll come and defend their mother. They'll come, they'll come, they don't, they don't know the danger that they get. Get back, little boy, get back, little girl. All they see is that's their mother. And they want to protect their mother. But they are a little child, and they, you know, no one taught them how to hold their hand. But you know what? It's something within them. And we got to be the same way about one another, say. It's, it's not that we have to go out and we have to physically fight for one another, but we do have to pray one for another. We do have to pray one for another. That's not gonna happen if we don't love one another. Amen. If we don't, if we don't love one another, why would I pray for my for my enemy if I don't love my enemy? Amen. I'll pray for my sister, my brother, because I love my sister and my brother. But God teaches us to love our enemy, Amen. so we have to learn to strive to pray for them also. In Jesus name. It's not easy, saints. Walking this holy walk is not easy. It's a lot of trial. It's a lot of tribulation. It's a lot of anguish. It's a lot of things that we are faced to where adversity is to the point to where we don't want to do this thing all the time. Mm -hmm. But we have to humble ourselves down and get willing. That's right. But once we humble ourselves and get down and get willing, we'll find out that it was, it, it was, it was good, it was better for us to do this thing. Amen. You know, but I thank and praise God truly for all of us as saints of God. Those that I've met over the years, you know, the saints, I say the green, you know, I was thinking here today, I say, you know, if, you, if, you, if everybody, uh, if the greens and the butlers left out of here, everybody that was uh, uh, akin to the greens and the butlers, it wouldn't hardly be too, too much of nobody that was in the church here. Mm -hmm. In this particular temple, I'm saying. Yeah. But in God's church, there's a lot of people saying, mm -hmm. there's a lot of souls. Yeah. But I'm just using just the, you know, just the, 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 the multitude of you all that are here in Jesus Christ, man. But nevertheless, it's a blessing for all of us to be here. You know, because God, God can take the small portion and he can make the small portion go bigger than the large portion that you have. Because that's why God said don't know his people. We don't know who's going to be saved. But we all should be striving to be saved. I want to call your attention to just a few scriptures or whatever, but it's to, be, it's to benefit us, saints. One thing about the scripture is to help all of us. And some of the scriptures that may be called out today, it may not help you today. 
But if you take heed, it'll help you some way down the line. Yeah, so just hold on to the scripture, saying. The 22nd chapter of the book of Matthews. There's a certain little parable in here, you know. But I, there's a certain, there are certain portions that I want to pull out of these scriptures in Jesus Christ's name. Matthew 22, we'll start at verse 1. Amen. Matthew 22, beginning at verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. Now just imagine a king. A king, he said, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. Now just think about a king. He has all of this, not only authority, but most kings are pretty much wealthy. Amen. I don't see too many poor kings. Right. So to me, a king, and he's preparing a wedding for his son, he's going to try to get the best, you think? Amen. Amen. Now just think about our king. Right, Jesus. Amen. Because our king, he is rich, saints. Amen. Our king, he wants, he wants, in other words, he wants the church to be married to him. Amen. So right now, while we're down here in time, Amen. while we're down here living, down here under the sun, God wants us to prepare ourselves to be married to him. Amen. As a man. That's been, that's that not only been married, but that is married. Mm -hmm. You know, when my wife, when we got ready to get married, which is something I've never done before. <laughs> but when we got ready to get married, you know, you, you go and you invite guests and so forth to come to the marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, you know, I, I do lawn service, you know, you know. I didn't go and get my old my old blue pants and my old ragged and blue shirt and, and, and step up in the in the church to, to get ready to get married. Mm -hmm. My wife, she, she kind of cooks and caters and so forth. She didn't just get on a raggedy gown or whatever and, and come to the come to the uh, church to get married in. We could have. Mm -hmm. I say we could have, yeah. but we did. Mm -hmm. We tried to get some of the best clothing to come to the wedding. She got, you know, she had this nice, I think it was an ivory, but most most women when they get married, it's, it's a white dress, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is it white? Purity. Is a, is a white, is, is, a, is a dress purity? Is a blind purity? Should be white. I say should be. Even, even the husband. Should be. But not all cases. Amen? Amen. I mean, sometimes a wife get ready to get married, and her, her what do they call it, the, 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 the bridesmaids and so forth, they know that this. They know that she ain't right. Amen. There was a commercial. There was a commercial one time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna stick to my text. But there was a commercial one time, and it had to where a lady was getting ready to get married. But evidently, the other lady was talking to her child, and that's why we have to be careful what we say to children. But whatever she said to the child, the child didn't know no better. So when the lady and the one that was supposed to be getting married, they was, you know, coming together, the child knew who his mother was talking about, and the child said, my mama said, she don't know why you're wearing a white dress. <laughs> yeah, ooh. <laughs> why is it ooh? It's ooh because sometimes people know that people are not worthy of marriage. Yeah. Say, we have to know that we are worthy of marriage to the Lord. The Lord knows all about us. He knows, he, knows, he knows our ups. He knows our downs. He knows all that's in between. He knows whether we have been good, like as some say, like Santa Claus. But God knows, saints. He truly knows. He knows whether we are pure. He knows whether we are filthy. If we are filthy, he's able to cleanse us up. He's able to Take that filth and wash yeah. it all away. Yeah. You know, there is there is nothing, you know, to me that's more, you know, beautiful to see than as we would say the saints all dressed in white. Right? Yeah. I say right. Yeah. How many times have we seen like a church, you know, they, I, I don't know what they call it, but a lot of times they have so much of whiteness on there, they'll, they'll say, you know, like first Sunday. 
They'll come to church and they'll say, hey, well, we gonna, everybody will dress in the white, including the preacher. The drummer, the, 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 the ushers, everybody is going to dress in white. Out of us dressing in white, there's always someone that's got a dingy dress on, a dingy suit on. There's yeah. a spot, something that's on, on, on their outfit. What am I saying? All of us are not always clean all of the time. So sometimes we know that that spot is there. Others may not can see it. But we know that it's there. Not only do we know that it's there, God knows it's there. But now let's do away with the garments, the natural garments, and let's look at ourselves. Because sometimes ourselves, we, 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 we carry filth on us. We know that we're not 100% right. But we should be striving for 100%. Yeah. Yeah. We can't keep on using these excuses. Lord, I'm not up there yet. God knows where we are. Yeah. Lord, I'm, 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 I'm trying to get better. God knows whether you're truly trying. Yeah. But saints, we got to really sincerely strive from our heart to be 100% right. Yeah. Why? Because the Lord is so soon to come. Yeah. Thank God for you, Mother. Yeah. Elder Green, a Pastor Green, a Pastor Green, whatever title that he held, the Lord came and took him away. Yeah. Not only him, he came and took our sister away. Yeah. Not only that, he's coming to take others away. Yeah. Thank God for you, sisters that you know had the cancer. Mm -hmm. There's some that even didn't even speak about that cancer, yeah. but right. some still yet have it. Yeah. But at the same time. See how God spared your lives? Yeah. Suppose God had taken you away while you was even in, not, not just in your sickness, but in sin and in sickness. God is merciful to all of us. Some of us don't get sick, but God can take us away. So say death is prevalent to any and everybody. But at the same time, we got to pray to God. We got to sincerely look to the Lord. Why? Because we want to be saved. Yep. We want to be saved. Amen. 22nd chapter of Matthew. Go ahead and read. Verse 2 again. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son mm -hmm. and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they will not come. Again, he sent forth other servants saying, tell them which were bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatling are killed mm -hmm. and all things are ready coming to the marriage. See there, God is yet having time, saints. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's having time for all of us. Yes, he you, is. me, and everybody else. If the world don't come in, God is giving them time. If we don't come in, God is still giving us time. Yes. If I don't come in, God is still yet giving us time. Mm -hmm. All of these things to where this king was, was making preparation, but, but it was for his son's marriage. Mm -hmm. God is going to come back and rapture the church up one day, saints. Amen. We got to strive to be saved. We got to strive to be ready. That's right. We got to wash our garments, yeah. wash ourselves, keep ourselves spotless from the world and the sins that's in the world, but a simple fact that we want to be saved. Yes. That should be our number one goal. That's right. I want to be saved. Yeah. Right. You know, it's not about a house. It's not about a job. It's not yeah. about money. It's not about none of these things. Yeah. Though the Lord allows us to have some of these things in this life, Let's not put these things above I want to be saved. Amen. I want to be saved no matter if I don't have a job. Yes. I want to be saved when I don't have no car, right. no money, no house, none of these things, no wife, no husband. Yeah. Some people yeah. like, some people come to the church, I want a husband. You know, I want a wife. Yeah. That ain't why you come to church, saying. Yeah. And friends, yeah. that's not why you come to church. Yeah. Church is about coming to save your soul. Yeah. If so happen you come to save your soul and on your journey of, of trying to have your soul saved, you find a mate happy for you. Because it's good to find yeah. one in the Lord. Yeah. But don't let it be that I come to church to, to find a wife and to find a husband. You know, because you got to get your soul saved. Amen. The church is about being with God and living with God throughout eternity. Yes, so we all have to strive for that high calling. Yes. Because it's, it's meant for everybody. Amen. Go ahead, Josh. <clears throat> but they made light of it and went their ways. 
one to his farm, another to his merchandise. See, saints, we can't make it light. We can't make light of this thing. Right. This is the most sincere part of living down here in this earth. Amen. It's about saving our soul. No. It's about pleasing God. We come into the house of God. There's vital information that's dispersed abroad to us. And then we have to receive these things. Amen. And we not only receive them, we have to keep these things. Because yeah. once we leave out of these doors, you can ask them, what, what was the word preached about? Oh, man, I forgot. You know, some of us have short-term memory. We can't remember these things. But by and by, you know what? Sometimes if you really uh, sincerely about, say, uh, about hearing the word of God, God will bring this thing back to you. He said the Holy Ghost will bring things back to your remembrance. Yes. But you got to you got to strive, you know, you got to strive sincerely, saints. Because it's about saving your soul. You know, many times in many churches, you know, you have to watch things that happen in other churches. When I say watch them, don't allow these things to cling on to you. Because sometimes you can go around various churches, sisters be talking about sisters, brothers be talking about brothers, preachers be talking about preachers, but mm -hmm. it's not about that. Mm -hmm. It's about saving your soul. Yeah. It's about let's please God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll come and tell you various things, and you don't even know the people. Amen. But at the same time, you, as you know how they say, you got to watch them spirits. Mm -hmm. Why? Because them same spirits can, can uh, be attached onto you when you go back home. And you start talking about your sister. You start talking about your brother. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that spirit done got you. Yeah. Yeah. But now you have to learn how to rebuke those spirits. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's not about talking about your sister. It's not about talking about your brother. It's about saving your soul. It's about pleasing God. Yeah. So, in other words, don't make light of these things. Yeah. They, they, they carry weight. And weight will drown you. Mm -hmm. And the Bible tells us to, to, to do what? Lay aside yeah. every weight and the sins which do us so easily beset us. Yeah. What do I mean when I say beset you? In other words, it'll cause you to stumble. It'll cause you to fall. It'll cause you to trip head over heels. Yeah. And then, oh, you know what? You done fell out of the church. Yeah. So, say we're striving to stay in the church. Come on. Verse 6, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them. Verse, verse 5 verse again. Verse 5, but they made light of it and went their ways. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. Mm -hmm. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. See, one thing about God, God sees and God knows all. That's right. I say God sees and God yes, knows yes. all. Yes. He knows whether we'll try to, you know, hurt our brothers or hurt our sisters. Right. He knows whether we, you know, he, you'll know for yourself if you try to hurt yourself because you're going to feel the pain. But sometimes your sister and your brother, they'll feel the pain later on in life. I didn't know that they were like that. Oh, man, I thought that they were really, you know. One thing about um, a, 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 a brother or a sister that you really have a lot of confidence and trust in, yeah. once you find out that they are belittling you mm -hmm. or making you, you know, seem so bad, they're talking about you, yeah. that seems like the worst thing that can happen to you, isn't it? Yeah. Why? Because that is someone that's so close to you. Yeah. If that was an enemy, you can accept that thing easily from an enemy, right? Yeah. Why? Because he already is. Yeah. He, he, ain't, he ain't hypocritical about what he is. He know, he know I don't care for him. Amen. He know I don't care for her. Mm -hmm. And they know I don't care for them either. Mm -hmm. But when it's a friend, when it's your brother, your sister, mm -hmm. we have to watch ourselves, eh? yeah. God sees all, he knows all. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Right. See, some people are not worthy for the kingdom of God. Yeah. Some people are not even worthy to come into the house of the house of the Lord. Yes. Why? Because they are so filthy. Not only are they filthy, they don't have a mind to serve God. Amen. When you first come into the into the house of God, you got to first come. The Bible says, "He that cometh to God must believe yeah. that He is, uh -huh. and that He is a reward of them that diligently seek Him." Amen. Number one, coming to the house of God, you're coming to be helped. 
Why would you go to the hospital and you all bruised up and, 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 and mangled up or whatever? Why would you even go to the hospital if you don't want to be healthy? Right. That's right. That don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. You might well call a morgue or whatever and say, hey, you got a, you got a, you got a casket for me? Mm -hmm. you, got a, you got a place that I can you know, lay down? You ain't got to give me the best casket. Just give me a casket. Mm -hmm. Why? Because in other words, I don't want to be healthy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to die. But when you come to the house of God, it's the saving of your soul. Yeah. It's to make you better. Yeah. Not only you, if you get better, those around you can be better. Right. But first, you got to be helped. Uh -huh. So coming to the house of God is for helping saints. Yeah. And we have to be careful as saints of God. Amen. Because sometimes when people come into the house of God, we can run them out of the house of God. Amen. Let me say that again. We have to be careful as saints of God. Because sometimes when people come into the house of God, we as saints of God, we can rush them out of the house of God. Amen. We're supposed to have a drawing spirit. A drawing spirit, saints. Showing forth the attributes of God. Love, kindness, gentleness, meekness, long suffering, patience. We're supposed to have all of these things, say, and some more. But sometimes we're not fully developed yet. But we have to say, we have to strive for perfection. Always remember, always put a person that's on the outside as yourself. And say, what would I want someone to do to me? Would I want someone to help me or would I want them to just shoot me away? I know how I am, but do you know how you are? Yeah. When a person thinks that, some people in their mind, they can think that I'm not even worthy. Amen? Amen. How many times have we dealt with a situation to where we know that we're not even worthy Amen. of help? We're not even worthy of someone reaching out, helping us. Amen. You know what? I thank God for who God is. Because God knows all things. Amen. God can look beyond what we can see. That's right. He can look at the future. Amen. And when he looks at the future, we can't see the future. But God can. Yes. How, many, how many can look back over your life and say, you know, I, I, I didn't never think I would be in the house of God. Mm -hmm. I was filthy. Mm -hmm. If you can't I already broke my hand. Because I know, saints, of a truth that I was not worthy of the kingdom of God. I know that I was not worthy to be called a brother. Why? Because I did things that was contrary to the word of God. Some things I did ignorantly. Some things I do, I knew I should have done better. I knew I should, should have done better. But at the same time, some things, I, I, some, you know I say, sometimes I just couldn't help myself. That's the truth. It takes the spirit of God in a man to be able to help your own self. Amen. In other words, the Bible says it like this. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yes. Right. Because sometimes you can you can be trying to try to stop a thing and you ain't got enough power. Amen. You just don't have enough power. Amen. But then when God gets into you, God gives you power. The Holy Ghost gives you power, saints. Yeah. Power to resist things the way your natural body can't resist. Mm -hmm. You know how some people, they, they are like, you know, as some say, they are, they are a born fighter. They'll fight at the drop of a yeah. dime. Mm -hmm. But now once you get into God and you learn about God to the point to where God is, God don't want us to fight one another. Yeah. God don't give us the spirit of fighting in that nature. Yeah. He wants us to fight now. But you know, our fight is not hard. Yeah. Our yeah. fight is through prayer. Yeah. Our fight is to the point to where we want to pull down a stronghold. Yeah. Things that have the church wrapped up, tangled up, tied up, to where we want to pray to God to where God can, can, can loose these bands, yeah. loose these enemies. But that's where our prayer. Why is it that why is it though in the natural that we can find someone that'll help us fight in the natural? But we can't find someone that'll help us to fight in the spirit sometimes. Where's the spiritual warriors? Mm -hmm. 
Everybody should be raising their hand. The church, we are supposed to be the spiritual warriors, saying eh? we're supposed to be able to pray one for another. Pray that God will pray that the enemy will, will flee. Pray that the enemy will leave all of us alone. Why? Because the enemy is there to, to deceive every one of us. You know, I, I thank God when, when the Lord was born. As soon as he was born, Satan was right there trying to deceive him, trying, you know, trying to kill him. But at the same time, God protected him. Amen. I heard various testimonies of various ones sometimes to where they were born, but their mother even wanted to kill them. Why do you say that? Why would a mother want to kill a child? It's not so much the mother, but it's the enemy that's trying to deceive the mother because God had purpose for that child that she's bearing. Yeah. But sometimes even the, the enemy wants that child to be deceased right there from birth. Hello. Kill him. Remember Moses? Amen. Remember Moses? Amen. Remember how that the, the, the king wanted to destroy all those that was from two years old, down in uh, two years yeah, and yeah. under. He wanted to kill them. Yeah. But how that the, the Lord was with Moses? Mm -hmm. Why? Because the Lord had a purpose for Moses. Mm -hmm. yes. But the Lord had a purpose for all of us. Saying, it may not be that all of us are preachers, mm -hmm. all of us are this, all of us are that. Just to be a saint. Just to be a saint yeah. Yeah. is That's worthy right. of the Lord preserving your life. Yeah. Preserving all of us. Go ahead, Josh. Verse, verse 8 again. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. Now all of this was about, you know, it wasn't about you was getting married. You were just a guest coming to the marriage. Yes. But you was not even worthy of being a guest to the marriage. Mm -hmm. Saints, what about the marriage? Mm -hmm. What about being married to God? Mm -hmm. I mean, if we ain't if, if we're not worthy of just being a guest to the marriage, my Lord, mm -hmm. how are we gonna be able to marry the Lord? Mm -hmm. To live with him throughout eternity. We really have to climb a lot higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We really have to get on our knees and pray a lot harder. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because we want to be found worthy in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, Josh. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Now hold yeah. on. Verse 11 again. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Yes. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Can you imagine standing before God? You know, went to, uh, uh, he, he invited you to a wedding and you coming in all with a whole lot of filth on you, your garment. Well, that's, that's the way it is, saying. You're not worthy for the wedding. You're not worthy to come in heaven. Oh, no. We have to find ourselves and make ourselves ready for the kingdom of God. Amen. Getting all the filth out of our life, all the things, all the sins. I'm going to say it like this, all the sins. Sins are what make it filthy, saints. Amen. Amen. How many know that, again, you can put on a white dress, you can put on a white suit male, mm -hmm. and still be just as filthy? Amen. Amen. It ain't all the time the outside of you no. that makes you filthy. Yeah. It's the inside. Yeah. Sometimes you can be filthy with a garment on, but your inside can be white as snow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Saint, we want to be white on the inside as well as on the outside. Uh -huh. Amen. But it takes God on the inside of us to wash us, to cleanse yeah. us, to make us what he would have us to be. Yeah. All right, Josh, Corey, if you could, uh, the third chapter of Revelation. Verse 1. We're dealing with the garment, saints. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is one of my topics. We're dealing with the garment. Mm -hmm. You know, how did this one come in and not have it on the white right garments? Amen. Okay. Amen. Revelation 3 and 1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, these things said he 
that have the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Mm -hmm. I know thy works, mm -hmm. that thou hast a name, that thou livest. In other words, God knows. Mm -hmm. He knows He knows everything. He knows everything about every one of us. Yeah. He said, the, the angel said, I know thy what? I know thy works. Mm -hmm. That thou hast a name, that thou livest. Mm -hmm. And are dead. Mm -hmm. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Be what? Be watchful. Saints, that's what we have to do in this Christian walk that we strive to walk in. Mm -hmm. We have to be watchful. The enemy is at every corner, every corner, mm -hmm. trying to deceive us. He'll walk before us as a friend. He'll walk with us as a neighbor. He'll walk with us as a sister, as a brother, as a preacher. Are we watchful? Are we watchful? Oh. We have to be, you know, one thing about the church, the church may pray, we may pray, we may pray, it's good to pray, don't get me wrong, yeah. but the Bible says watch and pray. Yeah. You can pray, but are you watching? Mm -hmm. Do you see the enemy that's right beside you? Do you see the enemy that's praying now right beside you? Remember Job? Yeah. I Job prayed, but the enemy was right there with him. Saints, we have to have spiritual eyes to see things. Just because we see things don't mean all the time we have to talk about them. But you know what? We can't pray about them. The Bible says watch and pray. Watch and pray. Some of us are praying but we're not watching. And some of us are watching but we're not praying. It takes both of us, saints. Because we have to be aware. Read that again and say verse 2. May be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Hold it. It says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy work perfect before God. Some things we have in our life, saints, that are. In other words, sometimes we know that we're not strong, we're about to slip, we're about to fall. In other words, just like the word say, they are ready to die. Yeah. I almost fell. You know, that almost got me. Yeah. But we have to learn to ask God to strengthen those things. Because it's going to take the strength of God for us to overcome these things. Mm -hmm. Some things we know that we're weak in. But we, even though we know that we're weak in these things, God even tells us as to encourage us. God said, let the weak say, I'm strong. Amen. You know, that sounds that's, that sound kind of like you deceiving yourself. But you know what? You're actually encouraging yourself. Right. I'm weak. Don't keep saying you're weak. Say, I'm weak, but I'm strong. Yeah. How am I strong? I'm strong with the Lord. The yeah. Lord will help me through this thing. Yeah. All I got to do is look to him. Yeah. I can't handle this by myself. Yeah. I'm weak, yeah. but I'm strong. Yeah. How am I strong? Because the Lord is with us. Yeah. The Lord is with us, saints. Yeah. The Lord is with us, saints. Yeah. When you know and understand that the Lord is with us, we are strong. Yeah. Even though we are weak, yeah. we are strong. Amen. Yeah. So we have to encourage ourselves with the word of God. Amen. Verse 2 again. Amen. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. In other words, God knows that we are not complete yet. Amen. Amen. But as long as we can keep striving, say, as long, in other words, don't give up. Don't let the enemy, don't, don't cast in the towel. You know, I'm tired. I'm weak. You know, though we are, we are tired. Amen. We are weak. But we, we, we got to look to the Lord. Yes. We got to keep looking to the Lord. Yes. Anytime you take your eyes off the Lord, you will fall. Yes. You will fall, Saint. Yes. It's not it's not in us to to, 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 to to overcome this thing. But God puts it, God puts his spirit in us. Yes. God functions us to keep on going. Amen. Keep on trying. Yes. Keep praying for your brother. Keep praying for your sister. Yes. You know, don't shut them out. You know, keep communicating with them. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if you communicate with them, hey, you can join. Mm -hmm. If you stop the communication, they'll cease. They'll die. 
Yeah. Stop, stop watering a plant and see what happens. Amen. Take it and, and, and put it inside and don't allow it to get no sunlight and see what happens. Oh. Yeah. The same thing happened to us, saints. Uh -huh. We need one another. Amen. We mostly need the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord can encourage us with his word because yeah. he can tell us things through his word that will cause us to act right with our brothers, act right with our sisters, yeah. act right with one another in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. That's what the word of God is for. Yes. But we have to pull these, we have to we have to receive these things mm -hmm. and not reject them. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. And let be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I found thy works. Found not that I have not found thy works perfect before God. It's good, it's good when certain things are not found perfect. Why? That gives us a chance to reach a little higher. Amen. You know, I, I, I'd rather be able to reach higher than to, than to be so high and think I'm something and fall down. Amen. Yeah. So say, let's keep reaching higher. Amen. Let's keep reaching higher. The ladder, the ladder they talk about a ladder in, in, in the scripture, mm -hmm. but it's about climbing. The ladder is not made to go down, but it, we're already down. We're trying to get up in life. Amen. So we have to keep striving. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Remember, remember therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Again, it says, remember therefore how thou, how thou hast received and, and, and heard it and heard and hold fast. When the word of God is, is, is being dispersed and delivered to us, we have to remember these things. Not only remember, we have to hold on to these things. Yes. Yeah. If we don't hold on to the word of God, when the enemy comes, we ain't got nothing to fight with. Oh, he yeah. told the Lord, see, one thing, I've never been into the military, but the core you have. I, you know, I watch you know, military uh, stories and so forth, but I'm wise enough to know that the military, they teach you how to fight. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they equip you with certain weapons, whether it's an airplane, whether it's a, it, it's, it's a knife, whether it's a gun, or whatever they equip you with. Mm -hmm. But only, not only that, they teach you how to fight. Yeah. In the Word of God, it teaches us how to fight the enemy. Yes. It's up to us to remember the how and what we have been taught. We have to, that's why the Bible says, hold on to those things. We have to hold on, saints. The word of God is what, 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 what will help us Amen. when the enemy come up against us. We can resist the enemy. Yes, he's gonna come. That's his job. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like if anybody thinks that the, that the devil is, is gonna stop just because you're a child of God, you have to see yourself. Amen. Just because you're the child of God, that makes the devil more anxious to trip you up. More anxious to knock you off your cliff, off your holy steadfastness. The Bible says, in one scripture, it says, it says, it says submit yourself unto God and his righteousness, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Right. Those are those are certain things that you have to do. First, you have to submit yourself unto God. Lord, what do your words say do? Yeah. And I'm going to strive to do those things. Yeah. Resist the devil. Yeah. Say you come. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I'm not, I'm not going to even entertain that. All right. Thank you, Lord. Submit, resist, and he said the devil will flee from you. Yeah. They say he's going to just stay away from you now. Yeah. But every time you come, submit, Resist and he yeah. will flee. Yeah. Submit, resist, mm -hmm. and he will flee. Yes. The devil, yes. that's his job. But it's our job to stay on our job, oh. calling on the name of the Lord. That's why I thank God yeah. for Jesus. us coming together here tomorrow mm -hmm. to call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. Some of us may not say, I need power, I need strength. Mm -hmm. But when you call on the name of the Lord, yeah. it gives you power, yeah. it yeah. gives you strength. So yes. let's be willing. Let's be submissive to that. Mm -hmm. Because in other words, it's to help us to, to fight against the enemy. That's right. The enemy is out there. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants the enemy to capture them. No, sir. Because one thing about the enemy, he ain't playing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. He get you, he gonna devour you. He gonna he gonna take your life. He, you know, if, if you're a mother without a father, he, he, I, 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 let me say it again. If you are a mother without a husband and you got children, if he can get the mother, he most certainly can get the children. Yeah. If he can take the father, he can get the wife. Because the, the, the father is supposed to be the strong. Yeah. So he always goes after the strong ones first. But if you start lagging back, you become weaker. You start praying. You start fasting. You start seeking the Lord. You start obeying the Lord's voice. The devil will get us. So we have to keep fighting. One thing about this, this spiritual warfare that we're in, saying we got to fight to the last breath, leave our nostrils. I say we got to fight until the last breath, leave our nostrils. Because the devil ain't playing. The devil will get a whole household if you can. But thank God for who God is. God will still protect us. Sometimes God will allow Satan to take so many, but he'll leave a small remnant. Why? Because the saints of God, we're, we're set up daily. We're, in other words, we're always set up to, for the enemy to come and take us. But sometimes it's like this. God will allow the enemy to take some of us. Not that the enemy has power, but that God has power. Because yeah. God won't let him take all of us. Amen. God said he has never left himself without a witness. Yes. There's always someone that's going to be a witness for the Lord. Lord always. Yes. If we come to the house of God yes. and we don't cry out and, and we don't sing praises, he said he'll get rocks. Mm -hmm. He'll get rocks that will cry out. Amen. Why? Yes. God got just that kind of power, say. We don't understand yes. the power of God. When we start and we just sit back and look at how do God feed all of us? How do God know all of us one from another? God is God. God is omnipotent. God knows more than we can even imagine, even think. We can't even comprehend God's knowledge, God's wisdom. Why? Because God is far above us. Far above us. As the Bible says, the heavens is higher than the earth, so are his ways from our ways. Amen. God knows, saints. Go ahead, Brother Corey. Amen. Revelation 3, verse 4. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which are not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Hold on. Hold that point. Josh, get on, uh, I think it's Acts 1 and verse 15, I think. Read that again, Brother Corey. Amen. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. In other words, God still has people, saints. In other words, though a whole host may go against God and fall before God, God will leave a small remnant, a small portion yes. that, that won't even bow. You remember, I think it was uh, King Nebuchadnezzar? We need to set up the golden image. Yes. And, 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 they, and they said, you know, for the sheriffs, the counselors, and all these men or whatever. And not only them, they were just the leaders over these people. Yeah. But they were great, na not nation, they were great Man. abundance of people to the point. Yeah. That when the king said, when he blow the trumpet, he wanted everybody to fall down and worship that golden yeah. image. Right. There was a certain sect of people that God has set there. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. These were men that did not bow down, saints. What about us? What about us? Would we have bowed down? In other words, we were face, they were facing death. Amen. They were facing a point to where the, the king was going to throw them into the fire of earth. You know, we talk about it, we hear these things, but do we really understand these scriptures? Amen. The Bible says he never left himself without a witness. Yes. <laughs> there are so many <clears throat> There are so many, there are so many people that are left on record for our benefit. In other words, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were left for our benefit to the point to where will we stand? Will we continue to hold on to the doctrine of God? Will we not fold and fall down to the point of just because fire is, is before us? The king is going to destroy us. Go ahead, Josh. Amen. That's one verse 15. Mm-hmm. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of the names together were about 120. All right, hold it. And read verse 4 again, Brother Cor. Amen. And thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, 
which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Even though it's 120, mm -hmm. that's still a small remnant when you look at the entire world, saints. Mm -hmm. uh, fourth, the fourth chapter of Revelation and verse 4. Revelation 4 and 4. We deal with a small remnant. But at the same time, we look at God. God is able to save saints. But how are our hearts? How are we to the point to where when things come up, we still have to hold on to God's holy word, saints. Amen. God is worthy. Amen. He's worthy, saints. Four and four. Revelation four and four. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads. They were clothed, they were clothed in what that? White raiment. Saints, it means something to have on your garments. Amen. It means something to be dressed in white. Amen. But it's not about, say, it's not about the clothing. Amen. I'm going to get to that point. But it's not about the clothing. Yeah. But the clothing, the, the whiteness represents purity. Yeah. The whiteness represents cleanliness. Yeah. And we have to strive to be clean. Yeah. Read verse 4 again, Josh. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats, I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their head crowns of gold. Okay. All right, Corey, back to verse 4 again in uh, Revelation. Now has a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Saints, we have to keep striving to be worthy. You know, we may wake up one day and we are not worthy, but ask God, repent, ask God to the point to where God can wash us and cleanse us back up. Man. The one thing about God, he can't cleanse us back up. Yes. I think it's Zacharias, Josh, the third chapter. Hold your point there, Brother Court. Josh, um, Zacharias, the third chapter. Amen. Verse 1. Zechariah, the third chapter, beginning at verse 1. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. What his name was? Joshua. What, who's reading? Joshua. All right. Tell, all right. Start again. Say it, say it again. And he showed me Joshua, the mm -hmm. high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Satan standing where? At his right hand to resist him. Saints, no matter what, Satan is always there to resist us. Yeah. Satan is always there to try to hinder us from doing the will of God. Amen. But we have to keep holding on. Amen. We have to keep pressing, saints. Amen. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Verse 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. The same Lord, the same God, he still rebuked. Amen. In other words, God has power. Amen. But, Satan, but Satan is trying to, he's trying to deceive us, saints. Amen. He's trying. He's, he's been doing a good job. But at the same time, we got to do a good job, too. Amen. Read on. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Is not, is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Amen. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Mm -hmm. Joshua was clothed with what? Filthy garments. I thought the garments was black. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes we can have on garments, but our yeah. garments are filthy. Yeah. Sometimes saints, we have been washed up and cleansed up by the Lord. Amen. Yeah. In other words, we we have set ourselves to be ready for the wedding, but yeah. some way in between the marriage, we don't allow ourselves some of us. To get back filth. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We know that, right? Amen. Thank God for who God is. He's a merciful God. Amen. He's a very merciful God. Amen. Some of us don't have no kind of mercy, but God is very merciful. Yes. Yes. Very merciful. Yeah. Read that verse again, Josh. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuked thee. O Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. It's not this a brand plucked out of the fire. Some of us were so close to the fire, we were, we were actually in the fire. 
We are worthy of death. We are worthy to be burned up. Yes. But because of the mercies of God, he pulled us out of the fire. Amen. Yeah. That's a blessing, saints. Amen. Amen. That's a blessing. Amen. That is a true, God knows, holy blessing to Amen. be pulled out of the fire. Amen. Amen. Read on. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with the change of raiment. Thank God. <laughs> Though we have we was cleansed up and we got back filthy, God said yet and washed us again. Amen. And not only did he wash us again, but he changed our garments. Amen. Because we went right back out there and got ourselves filthy again, but because the mercy of God, he came right back and changed our garments again. Amen. God is a merciful God, saints. Amen. He's worthy of prayer. That's right. He's worthy to be thanked. Amen. Amen. Let's not make light of the Lord. Amen. Let's not think that the Lord is just, you know, just some bypass, so to speak. Amen. God is worthy to be served. Amen. Let's serve God with sincerity, Amen. realness, Amen. purity. Amen. Isaiah 1 and 16. Mm -hmm. Wash you and make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment and to relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now. Let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. In other words, God can clean us up, saints. Amen. I don't care what you have done. Yeah. It may matter to me because I may I may look at a sin to the point I may start judging the sin and putting it on a certain level. Mm -hmm. But you know what? With God, sin is evil. Mm -hmm. Sin is to the point to where I don't care what you have done. It may be a, 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 a harsh sin in, in our eyes, but in the eyes of God, it's sin. Yeah. And He can wash you up. That's why He say, "Though your sin be red as crimson." <laughs> He said he'll wash you white as snow. Yes. Only God can do that. Yes. Only God can do that. Yes. I can't wash you. I can't make you clean. Only God can do that. Amen. But how are we clean? We're the clean word. through the word of God. Yes. By taking heed to the word of God. That's what cleans all of us up. Right. So we have to strive from our heart to be obedient to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Glory. All right, uh, Josh, you still... Okay, verse yeah. 5. And I said, let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with the garments, and the angel of the Lord stood by. Okay. And the angel of the Lord protested unto that, Joshua. That, that, that's good, Josh. <clears throat> All right, Cora, you uh, still in the Revelation? Yes, Revelation 3 and 4. Okay. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which are not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white rain. Wait, wait. <clears throat> Verse 4 again. <clears throat> Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Yes. Saints, we have to keep striving to be worthy. Amen. Josh, I want you to get the book of Jude, the 23rd verse. <clears throat> Jude is a book right before the Revelation. Amen. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Amen. We're dealing with the garments, saints. Amen. That, that's a whole mess. We're dealing with the garments. But the garments is not the natural garments. Go ahead, Josh. Jude 1 and verse 23. Mm -hmm. And others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Yes. 
hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. See, one thing about <clears throat> our garments, our flesh can cause our garments to be tarnished, yes. stained because of the filth of our flesh. If we walk, the Bible says it like this, if we walk in the flesh, we shall die. Amen. We have to strive to stay in the spirit Amen. because our flesh can always, always get us in trouble with God. Amen. Yeah. It's not always easy to walk in, in, in the spirit. Amen. Why? Because we're, 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 we're born in the flesh. We, we, we've lived in the flesh sometimes for so long. We have to learn how to walk in the spirit. Amen. But God will teach us of, the, of his way. But it takes time for each and every one of us to be developed. Everybody is not developed the same. Some are slow learn. Some are quick learn. But we all and we all we're all striving to be perfect. Amen. The let's see, Corey, you still? Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Verse number four. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which are not defiled thy God, their gods. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Amen. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. See, saints, that's what we got to do. We got to overcome ourselves. We got to overcome our ways. We got to overcome sin. Amen. Because by overcoming, we're striving to be what the Lord has us to be. Amen. Yeah. It's not easy. But with God, it's possible. Amen. We can look at it and say, man, I can't, I can't stop doing this. Man, I can't overcome this. It's like, you know, to me, have you ever, a, a person that, that is not an alcoholic, have you ever seen a person that's an alcoholic? How did they like drink from day in? I seen like from sun up. They start in the morning. Yeah. When nighttime comes, they're still drinking. Yeah. And then we can stand on the outside and say, you know what? Y'all need to stop that. Y'all ain't doing nothing killing y'all. Which yeah. is true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. But watch this. I, I, I learned this in life. How many of us like sweets? Hey. How many of us can stop our sweet addiction? Just stop totally. It's not easy. Yeah, yeah. So now, you think about that when you, the next time you tell a person to stop smoking. Yes, it's right to stop smoking. Yes, it's right to stop drinking. But it's not easy, saints. Amen. So what am I saying? We have to have patience with them also. We have to have patience with them. Just like with ourselves, we didn't overcome them one night, one drop of the hat. Amen. It took time. That's why the Bible teaches us as saints of God to, to, to be long, to be at long patient, have patience with people, long suffering, mm -hmm. for bearing one another. We have to have, we have to have patience with them. So you say, in other words, the Bible says that you must need have patience. Amen. God is patient with us, isn't he? He's very patient with us. Amen. Suppose God said, "Well, I'm gonna give you all two more days to be holy, <laughs> holy." <laughs> A lot of us are not making it. So we thank God for his patience. We thank God for his long suffering. Josh, the, hold on what you got, Corey. Josh, the 19th chapter of Revelation. Start at verse 1. Amen. Revelation 19 and 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. All right. <clears throat> when he said after these things, he heard, a, <clears throat> he heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Right before this happened, there was dealing with Babylon. Babylon was like a great city. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, in the book of Daniel, it talks about Babylon. Because if I'm not mistaken, Daniel then was, was brought captive over to the city of Babylon. That's right. But Babylon was a place to where it seemed like, if, if, if I can use a phrase like this, if I say something like San Francisco, California, which is a, which is a humongous city, but a lot of people flock to that city. They flock there because in that city, it's like you can you can you can make a lot of money, 
But it's a lot of it's a lot of things going on, so to speak, in that city, so to speak. But when you think about Babylon, and especially if you go back, I want y'all to go back and read <clears throat> the 18th chapter of Revelation. It'll talk about Babylon. But Josh, before you start at the 19th, I want you to go up to the go up to the 24th verse of the 18th chapter, and then we're gonna come down. Amen. Babylon 18 verse 24. Mm -hmm. Revelation. Oh, right. Revelation 18 and 24. Mm -hmm. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Now, with that point right there. See, a lot of times, I'm one to where I may, I'm a slow learner. So something I, I have to go back and read and go back and read to try to get understanding, try to get understanding, see what it's talking about. The city of Babylon, like I said, it was a great city. But a lot of people flocked to that because they were able to make a lot of money out of that city. They were able to sell a lot of their merchandise. But in the eyesight of God, that was a wicked city. Amen. That city did a lot of wicked things. Yes. So the 24th verse, it says, And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. <laughs> Babylon did a lot of wickedness, saints. Amen. Now verse, the chapter, verse 19. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. Yes. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. See how God is an avenger? Yeah. To the point, because a person do wickedness towards us, we don't have to do nothing towards them. That's right. All we have to do as saints of God is live and be saints. Stay holy. Amen. God will take care of it. Amen. You hear me? Yes. God will take care of it. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not for us to fight in this warfare. Yeah. Not physically. But we have to fight spiritually. Yeah. If God let it go on for another thousand years, God still sees these things. Yeah. God knows what's going on. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes I say, God will handle it. Yeah. Read the scripture. God will handle it. Yeah. Verse 2 again. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Yeah. And again they said, Hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. When they say hallelujah, hallelujah means high praise, Amen. high glory, high honor. Amen. In other words, that's the highest that you can give God. Everybody say hallelujah. 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 To the point you want to give God the highest praise. Hallelujah. The highest praise, saints. When these people saw that this city was destroyed for all the wickedness that they were done. What did they cry out? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Why? Because they know that that city. In other words, you destroying prophets, you you killing you killing the saints of God. Their blood is all over that city. It, they were glad when God destroyed that city. Glad. Saints, won't we be glad when God destroyed the enemy? Death, death. We don't have to die anymore. Our brothers don't have to die anymore. We don't have to suffer no more. Hallelujah. In other words, we praise God for what God is going to do. Read on, Josh. And again, they said, Hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen. Hallelujah. And the voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants. And ye that fear him, both small and great. And, and, and I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Yes. Let us be glad. We can, still, we can still say that today. Amen. That the Lord God Almighty reigns. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, the highest praise unto our God. Yeah. Read on. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Holy. 
Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. Amen. We ought to give God high praises for sending his son Amen. to die for Thank our sins. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 To the highest, we give God thanks for what he has done. Amen. Yes, sir. Say, and his wife had made herself ready. ready. Now suppose that, that that there was a fire worthy to die for our sin. Mm -hmm. But he made himself ready. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Holy. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen. Clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Amen. Saints, it's not about the God. Amen. It's about our righteousness. Amen. It's about how we're conducting and being, being obedient to God's word. Yeah. Our righteousness. That's what makes us all clean. Amen. In other words, if we can do right and stay right, yes, we'll be so pretty and white. I don't know if anybody has ever got a chance to be on an airplane to see clouds, be above the clouds and see clouds upon you. That is such a beautiful sight. Yes. They're laid out. They're so pretty. They're, they're very pretty to look upon. Amen. But that's just the wonderful works of God. Amen. God can cleanse us all up like that, saints. Yes. God can make all of us pure white. Yes. You know, they can, we can be so pure white, our eyes can't even, can't, the, the rays, we can't even, can't even take that. Amen. Why? Because it's a beautiful thing, saints. Yeah. Read on, Josh. He said unto me, right. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Amen. That's it. Amen. Saints, we are blessed to be able to come to the marriage. Thank you. Not only come to the marriage, but we want to be blessed even more by taking part in the marriage. Yes. Yeah. We, want to, we want to make ourselves ready so when the Lord come back for the church, He's coming back for the church as a bride. That you know, in other words, we are supposed to be presented as a bride to God. God is the husband man. We are as a chaste virgin. A chaste virgin. A man wants a wife <clears throat> that's a good wife. He don't want no woman that's done been all out there and went through this and went through that. He wants a good woman. Don't get me wrong. There are some people that will accept women. And the women will accept men as I've been all that and been out, but it's about change. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, if you don't marry me and you're gonna stay out there, it's better not to marry. Mm -hmm. God wants a pure church saint. Mm -hmm. He coming back for a church without a spot, without a wrinkle, without a blemish, by any such likeness. Mm -hmm. Saints, we have to strive for a hundred. Mm -hmm. Ninety-nine and a half. One mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Saints, I thank and praise God truly for your listening. I do pray I'm going to God you a God of signs and 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 God